Hey everyone, uh, we're going to go over some of the new features from Terminator X V3 in fueling. So they've done a bunch of really cool changes with fueling, um, fuel tuning, a lot of features. So this is this video is going to be um, you know pretty feature rich, right? So uh, here we are in Terminator X V3 software. This is just a uh, you know a demo VE table, right? So there's a couple things that they've added. So we, if you, if you don't know how to get here, you'd click the little fuel injector. We're in base fuel. Uh, one of the things that, that I want to point out is that they changed the colors on this. So this is a heck of a lot easier to read down here. It used to be a little bit more difficult to read uh, when it was sunny outside. So they've changed the colors, um, which is nice. And then they've also added this button right here. So this button right here will highlight uh, the entire map all in one shot. So if you need to make a wholesale change to the whole map, you can click this and then, uh, you know, say control and left arrow. And there we go. We're pulling 5% out, pulling another 5% out. Maybe we're going to add 1% back. Uh, so you can make a wholesale change to the entire map by simply clicking this and then control in your hotkeys. Okay. So that's not all they've added. That's just two small little things that, uh, that make life a little bit easier when it comes to tuning these things. So let's look at the big one that they've added. So go to system ICF. And notice we've got a Stoich value for the fuel type. And if we look here, we can go to E85, and a pop-up window is going to say, would you like to convert the target AFR based on the new fuel type? Just hit yes. The Stoich value is now 9.77. So let's bring it back to gasoline. So what is that Stoich value doing for us, right? That Stoich value, if we go into the fuel and we go to target air fuel, what it's doing is it's doing it in lambda. Right? So if you don't have a 2D table, maybe you have it selected as simple, change it to 2D table, and it can now show you lambda, right? So the lambda value all through here is 0.99, you know, 0.99, um, and then up here is 0.87. And in air fuel, it's, you know, 12.8, 14.5, 14 14.6. So Watch what it does when we change the fuel types, right? So our lambda value is 14, or 1 equals 14.7 air fuel, right? Uh, if we go here back to the system ICF and we change the fuel type from E80, gasoline to E85, uh, yes, we're going to convert it. We go back over here to fuel and we go to target air fuel. Now our lambda value is uh, 9.77 and our target values have changed. So the lambda value has not changed, right? But the targets have so it keeps the same lambda value up here 0 0.87 you know 0 0.99 we can go uh, back over here swap it back to gasoline yes fuel type or fuel icf target air fuel and the lambda values are the same so what it's doing is it's changing the target air fuels based off of lambda values and now you can tune this thing for target air fuel in lambda if you'd like i'm not much of a lambda guy but um you know, if you are, cool, use it. Um, so that's pretty slick. I'm a big fan of how they did that. Uh, so again, let me show you how this works, right? So here's our VE table. We go to conversion. Let's just look at this one cell. It's 1,489 pounds per hour of fuel. So if we go to target air fuel, right now we're in, um, we're in gasoline, right? So now we can go over here, change it from gasoline to 85. Yes. And we go to target air fuel. Our new air fuel is 8.5. Our lambda is still the same. But we go to our base fuel, click conversion, and now we're up to 2,242 pounds per hour of fuel. So it's automatically making your changes for you in the fuel map based off of the lambda value that you have keyed in uh, and the target air fuel value that you've keyed in or, or the target air fuel value that you've keyed in. So that's pretty sweet. If you run a you know, race gas or a race E85, you can go to advanced and it's going to say, uh, don't be dumb, hit OK. And now you can change your storage value yourself, right? So if you're tuning it in Lambda and you want to make a change uh, to the storage value yourself, you can. Um, so that's pretty slick. Fan of that. Gasoline. Yes, there we go. OK, so we covered Lambda. There's some other really cool stuff that they've added here with um with v3 so um we have got uh i'm sorry right here in the system icf okay so we're in the system icf 
click on close loop slash learn. So y'all have been in here before. Um, so these are the general uh, closed loop and learn parameters that are that are necessary to uh, tell the ECU when we want to go into closed loop, when we want to go into learn. But there's some new advanced parameters that I found to be very useful, right? So previously people had problems with the car staying in closed loop and then they didn't understand why. And then you look at a log and it's because they're pedaling it or, you know, running the throttle up and down and whatnot. So if we click on advanced parameters, okay, there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Stay closed loop while TPS is above 85%. So even if your foot is not at 100% TPS, as long as it does not go below 85%, it's going to stay in closed loop. You can obviously modify that 75%, 50%. You know, I don't suggest doing it at 1% because it won't allow you. So 10% so is the minimum value, right? So um, I obviously do not suggest the 10%. But I mean, whatever, you, you can if you want. So 85, whoops, 85 is the pre-canned value that they ship out the door with. But um, you can change uh, you can change it to whatever you want, uh, as long as it's above 10% 10, 10 up. Now we have a closed loop acceleration enrichment delay. Okay, so what would happen with most people when they were uh, racing the car, they'd have their foot to the floor or what they thought was to the floor. And... TPS would start to back off because maybe they're sliding in the seat or whatever. Um, and it would it would kick it out of closed loop and it would start to add acceleration enrichment. So if you don't know what acceleration enrichment is, it's right here. So what it would do is a TPS rate, of, it would see a TPS rate of change and it would start to add acceleration enrichment but kick it out of closed loop. Now we have the ability to have a delay in that, right? So that means that for 0.5 seconds... Um, it's going to wait before it'll uh, before it will uh, start enabling uh, acceleration enrichment. That's pretty slick. I like that. The next one: RPM above idle for closed loop while closed throttle. So, what that means is um, you have let go of the throttle, okay, and the engine is accelerating. So let's just say you're cruising at you know 7,000 RPM. You snap the throttle blade shut. Well, the converter is going to hold it for a little bit. So before we enable closed loop, we can have an RPM parameter set here that's based off of what your target idle is, right? So let's look at your target idle quick. So we go to idle ICF and we go to the idle speed. So if target idle right here at 160 degrees is 700 RPM, right? We go back over here to closed loop, advanced parameters. At 1200 RPM, it's going to enable closed loop again for with the throttle closed, but prior to that, like anything 1201 and up, it's not going to touch it. Make sense? Hopefully. So, okay. Next one, closed loop decel delay while part throttle. Okay. So that means it's greater than 2% and rich. So closed loop decel delay while part throttle. So if you are in part throttle, um, and it is rich, it will wait. So sometimes when you go to part throttle, uh, you have acceleration enrichment kind of spike it or whatever it may be. Um, and what it'll do is it will it'll wait for the programmed amount of time. And then the same thing, closed loop decel delay while part throttle, right? So what that means is, like, say you're cruising at um, 3,000 RPM, okay, and you hit a little bit of a hill and it comes down to 29.99 or below, all right? So that's the engine is decelerating. Okay, so your part throttle uh, greater than 2%, right, and rich. So say your 4% TPS at 2,500 RPM, the engine starts to decelerate. It's going to wait for the programmed amount of time before it'll go into closed loop. Um, same thing with being lean. So closed loop decel delay while part throttle which is greater than 2% and lean for 0.4 seconds. So those are some really useful uh, tools to keep your fuel map nice and clean and not have a condition where the O2 sensor is kind of running away from it or um, uh, giving you, you know, giving you a problem. So um, yeah, hopefully that, um, hopefully that will, uh, will alleviate a lot of the problems that some people have had. Um, so 
fueling now in V3 with uh, with Terminator X is actually pretty dang awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. There's one other thing that they added that I would consider fueling, okay, and that is injector phasing. So let's click on injector phasing. So um, this is injector end angle. I'm not going to make a video about end angle, but I'm going to show you the thing that they've added, okay? So this is your standard end angle table, which is your map over here versus engine RPM over here. You have an advanced mode. What that means is you can now build it based off of RPM on fuel pressure or whatever you choose. So it could be RPM versus uh, TPS versus grams per cylinder. Um, whatever you want, you can change it. Um, that you can change your X and Y axis to whatever you want so that you don't need to use up one of your advanced tables to do injector end angle if that's what you want to do. So pretty slick little addition there. Obviously, if you go into advanced mode, it takes out all this stuff out of the equation right so if you don't know anything about injector end angle read the help file on it uh, there's some other videos out there on youtube kind of talking about it um and then even down here there's a little bit of uh of information that'll kind of teach you what it's doing right so pretty slick that you got an advanced mode uh to do that i'm i'm, I'm pretty pretty happy about that um some combinations need some injector end angle to run, especially down at idle area. Um, my personal car with the three sets of injectors, the, the pump cast injectors are underneath the intake and they kind of point at the top of the runner. So it's kind of goofy. So I have to use injector end angle to actually get the car to even run. Um, it runs perfectly fine on the other sets of injectors that are pointing towards the back of the valve. But now you take a set of injectors and you point it up towards the top of the runner. Um, it runs a little goofy. So you have to use injector end angle to make it run. So pretty slick. Uh, big fan of the fueling changes that they've made. Again, don't overlook these, right? Use these. They're, they're rather useful. Uh, so check it out. Check the other videos out that I'm putting out here on V3 and on uh, Dominator and HP's V6 Build 300. There's a lot of really good features that I believe that everybody should be uh, using and are getting accustomed to uh, using. So, all right, see you later.